welcome to 151 Garage. I'm Sean. I'm Jill. And today we're going to do a modification that we've been wanting to do for this for a while. Now, the auto start stop on this thing, we are going to eliminate it by putting on the auto start stop eliminator, obviously. Uh, so with this is weird because this is a manual transmission. The automatic transmission, when you come to a stop, as long as your foot's on the brake, mm -hmm it will stay off. Once you let off the brake, it starts up again or push the gas, starts up again. This one, as long as your foot is on the clutch, it will not shut down. So I've noticed that while driving this over the last 2,600 miles is if I come to a stop and I take it out of gear and release the clutch, it shuts off. So usually when I drive, I come to a stop, I leave the clutch in because my gear is already in first. It never goes off unless I sit there for a long time and that's when I've started to notice it. Now, what this right here will do is give you the option to either have it on or off. Whatever setting you push on, whether it be on or off, is what it stays until you decide to do it the other way. You don't have to take it all apart again. You don't have to reprogram uh, your computer. You don't have to unplug something underneath the hood like a lot of people have suggested. I don't know yeah, about I that. Anytime you have an open contact underneath the hood where you can get mud or water or anything else like that in there, creates an electrical problem, possibly a short later on. And that's gonna be all on you. Yeah, that's gonna be all on whoever did it. Plus, to undo that, if you do like the Forescan, that people talk about. That's we plan on doing thing. some other things with the force scan, but not this. That's a permanent thing. I can't just go and reprogram it real quick on the fly. I have to have the computer and everything to be able to do it. As well as if I unplug something underneath, I have to stop the car, get out, pop the hood, replug it in, and then do it again. Why would I need to do that? Maybe I like to start stop, maybe she doesn't, or vice versa. If she gets in, she can turn it on. I get in, I can turn it off. I don't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. So if it's the only thing, is you're the only person driving it, well, then do what you need. But if you have multiple people driving it with different uh, choices, different preferences, it's better off to have that right yeah. there, so. Now this may look familiar, because we did do it on the Bronco Sport but just has a little bit of a different application process. It is a little bit more in depth than just plug and play. And you do have to take off some panels. You will not find instructions anywhere on it as you would if you got this for the Bronco Sport. Yeah, the Bronco Sport actually has the instructions on the back side. This does not. This does not. This it's, says go to the website. I went to the website. It's a little bit more in depth than what you think. So Click on the video on the website. We'll go through and show you just what they show us. And we'll also show you just how easy it is going to be or how hard it's going to be. She's going to be doing all of it. I'm going to sit there and film and try to try hope, to uh, hope when be a good filmer, film person. So I'm going to be the film crew today. OK, we'll see you in the uh, Bronco. OK. All right, so the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this panel off because this needs to come down oh, and that's going to be in the way. Yeah. And here's what you're going to need. You're going to need a torque bit, a socket. Seven some, millimeter. Yep. Some painter's tape to protect the areas, some panel removal tools, and a towel. There goes that. So that's exactly what it looks like if you guys wonder. So put that back here. You want to use your painter's tape and you're going to lay it across this because it's like I said, this whole panel needs to drop down. And I will be working on both sides of the car. Majority of it's on this side, but there's some access points that you need to get onto the driver's side. And all this is doing is protecting the finishes from getting scratched up because 
like she said, this panel does drop down. It keeps it from scratching this. And also when you put it on the bottom of this, it keeps it from scratching that portion. So. Yeah, so use as much as you need. Even though you're doing a non-marring finish or non-marring tool, not a screwdriver, you still want to put something on here to protect it a little bit better. Uh, you will be prying against that. Keeps it from getting any scratches in there. So Sean's gonna get the uh, pry bar tool out. Whichever one fits. So there is a panel underneath here. Um, I don't know if you guys can really see it. Well here, I can get it from this side. So this panel right here is what needs to come out. First off, let me show them what you did. So to go over real quick, we put tape on here. We put tape right there. This is to keep you from scratching the, uh, the plastic when you actually pry it out a little bit. Let's go ahead. Down right there because it's pulling down my shirt. Both sides. And now that we have it down, all we have to do is pull this out. There is little clips in there. We'll show them what we'll show them what it is uh, when we get it out. But it takes a little effort and it makes some really bad sounds, but we'll get it out. So the clips are these right here. They're just little blue clips. Yes, my thumb is bleeding, but that's what happens. Um, just little blue clips. They just clip in. They make god-awful noise, but... You know, as long as you're fairly gentle with it, it's not going to rip it apart. You're not going to break it. It does just come straight out. So don't try to pull it down or twist it or anything. Once you get this to clear the bottom of this, just pull it straight out. Leave the tape intact because you're going to need that later on. Now we're going to come over to the driver's side. There you go. So there's probably one more a little yeah, bit further is. down. Don't use a pry tool. You won't need it. There you go. Got and it. it just drops down. So watch your leg. Drops down to the floor. Don't have to worry about it. Now. There is. Yeah, they're probably going to get whiplash. Sorry. There's two nuts right here. You want this, or bolts rather. You want this one right here. So this one you have to do first, and then you go over to the glove compartment and do the second one. Now, like she was saying, there is two bolts here. Um, I don't know if you can see it. Let me see if I get a reflection of something on that. Yeah, right there. So you have a bolt right there, a bolt right there. You take the one closest to this side. So otherwise, you just you have to take the other one off, anyways. Now the AC control panel needs to drop down. That way you can access where that switch is. And our auto start stop switch is right there in the top. There you go. Okay. So, like I was saying, Grab. the auto start stop thing is right here. You're sitting on what I need. So, and we do put a towel down that will, again, we don't scratch the panels on there. Open yeah. it up. Or right there. That's fine. 
And put the towel down. What she's talking about is put this all the way back. Is this right here? Yeah. This is for your auto start stop, which is that right there. All right, so we got your panel dropped. So you have the pigtail disconnected from the switch. You're going to put this pigtail, which is identical, that's what you're looking for, into where that goes. You want to push it until it clicks. Take the one that you pulled out. Click it into the second pigtail. This is what's going to program your memory to stop or start. Now we can zip tie this down if you wanted. Um, we probably will. Hang on a second. So hold this real quick. What I'll do is I will zip tie this. I'm trying to find the best place to put it where it's not going to be like right in the way. I think underneath this is probably the best place since this is the lower portion of it. I don't know if there's a whole lot of space in me uh, behind this, but this I'm pretty sure there is. Hey, yeah, you gonna want to get your nippers? My flush cut dikes. Thank you for commenting. Whoever said that. Nice and uh, that way, and the, the reason you want to do flush cut dikes is that way it doesn't have a sharp edge to cut against any wires or anything like that. So it is a good good thing to have, especially if you do a lot of wiring inside cars and stuff. So anyways, and now it's reverse application. Put everything back together. Pushing in the place. Okay. I tell you what, it doesn't make as mm -hmm. horrible sound yeah, going, back, going in. back in as it does coming apart. Oh, so. yeah, this is horrible. Um, where's the socket? It just okay. presses into place again. That's all in. Make sure it's tight. That way it doesn't, you know. The way you can check is just yeah. pull on it real quick. Pull on that side. I already did. Oh, you already did? Okay. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Uh, you have the bottom panel to put on, which yeah. is behind you. It's back there. And that is the same way. So line up these right here with the holes, push them in. It's so much smoother going in. Yeah, I'm about it. And then pull this off. Maybe. There we go. Okay. And then the last thing is uh, put that back on. Which is nice if the way they come out with new handles and stuff like that, because these are replaceable. You can uh, change these out when aftermarket comes up with uh, new handles and such. I've seen a couple R&D ones, but none available that I know of. Tight because this will be something that you grab on. The last thing you want to do is grab it and have it fly off. So, it's out of gear. I'll give okay. you the opportunity. Switch again. Now, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and start the car, set it to off and then restart the car and uh see if it stays on i got the key right there 
Alright. So it's off right now. So, right now it's on. You turn it off. You turn the car off. Turn it back on after everything's off. Remains and off. it remains off. Now, so you don't have to reset it every time. Right. So when you cycle or when you cycle it to be on, you just hit it. Now it's on. You do the same thing. You turn the car off. Wait for everything to stop. Turn it back on. It will stay on. So we're gonna cycle it to where it's off permanently, just like how I did on my Bronco Sport. Yep. So we're gonna do it off. Turn the car off again. Now every time we start this car, it's gonna stay off. It's not gonna uh, redo itself to on. Right. So there you go. It, off. So, it will stay off regardless. Even on my Bronco Sport, that's the same thing. Yep. So there you have it. Okay. Okay. Good job. High five. So. For once, I got to fully install something. <laughs> yeah, I know. I didn't have to do anything. I was the camera person. There was some things that we learned from it. Those clips are pretty tough, as you can tell <laughs> right there. Uh, it is a. Be patient with it. Yeah, Don't be, be like you know a Neanderthal and just like yank rip it, it all apart. apart. They do come out. They do make a god awful noise when they come out. But that's normal. But that's normal. Uh, it's just resistance and stuff like that. Once it starts popping. Uh, when you finally get it out, you'll see that it's just a small plastic clip that seems to make an enormous amount of noise. Uh, easy installment. Easy. Very much easy. Yeah. A one. <laughs> it's not too bad. Uh, it's not as easy as hers. I actually think hers was harder because I had to... The, the access to get to hers was... Even though it was underneath the dash it was a complete pain in the ass to get the clip undone from the back side because your hand doesn't have there's not enough space for you to actually do it we had to take the clip completely out the whole bracket and everything out and then take the clip apart put it all back together and then reinstall the bracket and the clip or the the uh yeah. connection all together so this was a little bit easier even though it didn't seem like it um it's pretty straightforward i mean yeah when i was first watching the video on how to install it i honestly thought it was gonna be underneath the console <laughs> yeah so it it's not too bad uh will we be installing this on every single bronco the answer to that is absolutely yes, yes it is well worth the 99.99 sound of mind tag on it. peace of mind you know uh to be able to install it and not have to worry about any issues regarding uh, retuning your CPU yeah. or computer or... Especially if you're not car savvy because if you, you don't want to mess up with the CPU because then it's going to be really expensive when you go to the dealership and say, hey, look, I was trying to do this and this happened I instead. Up. Yeah, because they charge about $150 an hour. To fix it. Yes. And it's going to take at least an hour, plus their break, plus lunch, plus three hours later. They'll fix it. Yeah, so they have to figure out what you did to screw it up first and then fix what you screwed up yeah. later on. So uh, it can be a very costly mistake where if you just spend the $99 to 99 cents and watch this video or even the instruction video on the site, you can save yourself a lot of headache. <laughs> yeah. Again, we like it. Uh, we have it on hers. We have it on this one now. We'll have it on every vehicle that has the auto start stop. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a good investment. And if you want to turn it back into stock, you can just press the button or remove the clip. Personally, I just press the button and it turns it back into auto start stop and you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Um, Nobody would know. Yeah. How would they know? <laughs> oh God, there's videos. Uh, <laughs> Please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and congratulate Jill on the first mod pretty much all by herself. So she yeah. took charge of this one. She didn't even want me to help too much. Yeah, he asked. He's like, do you want me to do this one? I'm like, no, I wanted to do it. So she took it. She took all the tools. Didn't even give me a chance to do anything. <laughs>
I kind of forced my way in there because it was easier for me to get to a certain thing than her. Yeah. But, uh, you know, again. The fruit drinks and a cameraman. He did please. a fine job on cameraman. Please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. See you next video. Bye. Bye. Cameraman, really? That's all I am to you? No.